Okay, time for this week's Fiscal Focus, brought to you by InfoChoice, your choice of information on Australian consumer finance. Now, this week's topic is the rental market, and we want to talk about this on the back of InfoChoice's recent rental survey, which last month revealed 70% of renters throughout Australia are now spending more than 30% of their gross income on rent which is the common definition of rental stress. Joining us to discuss is the owner and managing director of investment research firm, SQM Research, Louis Christopher. G'day, Louis. Thanks for joining us on the Savings Tip Jar. Uh, nice to be with you, Dominic and Emma. Thanks. Good to be here, Dom. Um, Louis, sorry. Is it, so first of all, is there a rental crisis? And if so, what has led to this? Oh, absolutely. Uh, there is a rental crisis. Uh, I've been covering the Australian housing market through our data and research since uh, the year 2000. And I've never seen the rental market this tight. So there's no question there is a, a rental crisis. It's been occurring right across the country, both with the capital cities as well as regional Australia. And it persists with us to this day. Um, so what triggered this rental crisis? How did it come about? It came about really shortly after COVID uh, broke and we went uh, into lockdowns. So wind back to the year 2020, uh, the first lockdown when COVID was really scaring everybody uh, pretty severely. Uh, what we actually first recorded then was a rise in rental vacancies. So what happened back then was that a whole bunch of Airbnb owners could no longer get the, the business traveler, the holiday maker, and they they basically moved to the long-term leasing market to try and lease their properties in the long-term leasing market. And so there was actually a, a brief rise in rental vacancy rates, which, which lasted for about four or five months. But from about the end of 2020 into 2021, 22 and, and to present day, there was a sharp decline in rental vacancies. And that occurred because number one, um, when we went into lockdown, we had COVID, we as a community were looking for accommodation where we were going to be living with less people. So the number of occupiers per dwelling fell quite dramatically. And that actually increases the demand for properties. When you have less people per dwelling, that means there, there's greater demand for more dwellings. So that happened. At the same time, uh, the supply of dwellings briefly uh, fell away in terms of new dwellings. Uh, and so we weren't building as much as what was normally required. That did change briefly in 21, 22. There was a bit of a pickup in supply. But the fall in the number of occupiers per dwelling more than up offset that increase in supply. Then as we went into 22 and 23, when the borders opened up, we had an influx of migration coming into the country, far more than what anybody anticipated. So normally the population expands by some 200,000 to 250,000 people a year, sometimes 300,000. And last year in 2023, it expanded by north of 600,000 people. Uh, so there was this influx of people coming in looking for accommodation. Over and above that, with the rise in interest rates, we had then a, we started to record falls in dwelling uh, completions over the course of 2023. So as migration was really ramping up, supply started to fall away again. So it's, it was a combination of many factors which uh, drove uh, rental vacancy rates to record lows. Over and above that too, there's been a move, a long-term shift towards Airbnb dwellings compared to rental properties. You're seeing a lot of standard suburban stock, which would normally be in the long-term leasing market, being offered in the short-term leasing market. And that remains to this day. And that means that there's, there's less stock available in the long-term leasing market. 
Yeah, so I guess that's uh, what it comes down to really is is that supply, that uh, that vacancy rate. You know, I, I can remember in br- renting in inner city Brisbane uh, in 2016, 2017, uh, there was, a, there was a, a huge sort of supply glut. So there was a huge, uh, you know, construction boom of lots of um, high rise inner city apartments uh, and that's suddenly right. rents, were, rents were dropping quite quite a lot. But now it's, uh, it's the opposite where we're seeing these vacancy rates uh, at or around the, the 1% mark in so many parts of the country. So on the vacancy rates, uh, Louis, you know, going forward, do you, where do you see those heading? Do, are, they, are they going to start to trickle back up or is it going, things are going to get worse? Well, the hope is, is that uh, the federal Labor government will be successful in its policy towards migration and in the sense that they now wish their public, publicly stated they now wish to try and slow down the rate of migration and they've brought in some policies to assist with that. So far, we haven't seen any signs of a slowdown. If you look at the overseas arri- the monthly overseas arrivals um, series that's released by the ABS, uh, there was no slowdown through to December. We'll see what happens this year. The hope is migration slows down, but the big problem we've got for this year is that we're actually set to building less dwellings. So according to the ABS, the pipeline is for this year we'll build about somewhere between 150 to 160,000 dwellings. That would cater for an additional 220 to 240,000 people. So that's what the overall population growth rate's got to slow to. And I'm not so sure it's going to slow to that level for this year. It might slow down to say 400,000 people. But when we look at what's in the pipeline, the, the migration levels would have to slow down to somewhere around 150,000 people. And, and then you take into account the natural population increase, which is running at about 110,000 people now. Um, yeah, so it's hard to see how it's going to get better anytime soon. We're hoping that it does get better for tenants, uh, but at the moment it's not. And we are still recording rental rises uh, as we speak, rents rose or asking rents rose in January by about 1.4%. And so far in February, it looks like they're going to be up again by a similar number. Yeah, like Dom touched on in the intro, we did a survey uh, on Info Choice about this rental crisis. And we had more than 96% of renters respond saying that they think governments need to do more to help renters. What do you think the government can or should do to assist in this crisis? Well, first and foremost, they've got to do things which are which are, are not counterproductive. So I'm a strong believer in not putting caps on rents, as an example. I'm well aware that the uh, the the federal Greens Party are keen to put ca- caps on rents. I think that would make the situation far worse. Um, yeah, on the on on the face of it, may it may sound good, but it would create extreme shortages in the market, you would have less property investors in the market, you'd have more property owners moving to Airbnb dwellings, and there would be less new builds occurring if you started to put caps on rents. We've got to resolve this through straight out economics. I do believe a cap on migration would work, and I believe we need to take a bit of a carrot and a stick approach to property developers. So the notion of, for example, putting a tax on vacant land is something I generally do agree with because that should encourage uh, development of this unimproved land. Uh, There's also been movements by various state governments to try and increase density levels within our inner city rings, and that will help over time. But these are things which are on the supply side will not bring supply forward to this year. It's something that we can hope for and say, 2025, 26, 27. What can we do now to try and create some relief in the market? And the only way I can see that is, once again, focusing on migration and getting those migration levels down until such time that supply starts ramping up. And Louis, we actually asked um, the the survey participants which you know, policy they think would be the most effective at uh, improving rental affordability. And uh, it was quite divided, but the most popular answer among renters was more public housing with uh, just over a quarter uh, of participants selecting this response. Do you think more public ha- housing, that, that really is the best action for, for governments to take? I think it's part of the solution, but it's not the entire solution. Uh, you're essentially asking governments to start building 
I don't think governments have been particularly skillful on that. Um, leave it to the market, but change the taxation policy thresholds to encourage more building. We can definitely do that. That would certainly uh, help over the medium to long term. But do I believe in more public housing? Yes, fundamentally, I do believe in it. It's part of the solution. It's just not the solution. In terms of negative gearing, if we were to remove the tax benefits of that, what do you see the potential ramifications for the rental market? Yeah, we did We did some research on negative gearing uh, some time ago. We actually looked at Labor's 2019 policy. Uh, and I am a believer of changing negative gearing, but we've got to be careful what we don't do is, you know, strip the Band-Aid off too quickly. OK, it, it needs to be phased out, not taken straight away out. If you do that, you will see less building once again. I believe in overall taxation change, which involves negative gearing, stamp duty and land taxes. So bring in a land tax, which I believe would increase liquidity in the marketplace. Cut away with stamp duty, which would reduce the transaction costs. Therefore, people would be more easily able to pick properties which best suit their current lifestyle as opposed to empty nesters living in large dwellings. Uh, and, um, you know, I, I think the negative gearing change would also help because it would actually increase rental yields and put our rental yields more in line with what you see overseas. And if we were to have higher rental yields on offer, you would then see build to rent schemes work more efficiently. At the moment, there's a lot of talk about build to rent in this country, but there's actually not so, not to date, a whole lot of action occurring because many fund managers are struggling to make the numbers work as they currently stand. Yeah, certainly. We need to see a lot of action take place uh, in some regard, whether that is yeah, build to rent and uh, numerous different taxation policy changes, phasing out stamp due. Really. There's so much that can be done. Uh, we need to see you know some sort of action really to, to resolve this. So, uh, But uh, I'm afraid we're out of time. Louis, Christopher, really appreciate uh, your insights and thanks so much for joining us on the Savings Tip Jar. Thank you, Dominic. Thank you, Emma.